This episode of Death Metal is sponsored by Blue Chew, a chewable that ups confidence in bed with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Oh yeah, it works even faster than pills, so you're good to go whenever, wherever. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians and shipped discreetly to your door. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use the promo code DBC. It's just five bucks to ship. That's B L U E Chew.com, promo code DBC, to try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. And when you support our sponsors, you help make this show possible. So please use the promo code DBC at BlueChew.com. Not every princess needs some knight in shining armor they've never met to rescue them. Some even take it upon themselves to protect other lands they've never known. Like She-Ra, the princess of power in Etheria. And Wonder Woman, the warrior princess of the Amazons. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, but not so far that it could be copyright infringement. A timeless war raged on between two planets, Eternia and Etheria. On Eternia was everyone's favorite Conan the Barbarian wannabe. <laughs> and Etheria was the home of the Horde. I bet you'll never guess which one's the bad guys. But before he was He-Man, Prince Adam had a twin sister, Princess Adora. Sadly, she was kidnapped from Eternia by the Horde's leader, Hordak, and brainwashed to become his brutal enforcer on Etheria. Okay, who came up with these planet names? Cause I'm already confused. Years passed, but eventually He-Man stumbled upon his sister while he was busy with something else. He was on a quest to find a wielder for a magical weapon, the legendary Sword of Protection. Wouldn't you know it, when Adora touched his sword, uh, don't read into that, her mind was healed and she transformed into the heroic She-Ra. She-Ra, She-Ra. She-Ra, She-Ra. Man, that song's so much better than He-Man's. As the princess of power, She-Ra possesses godlike speed and strength and wields the sword of protection like a master. It's no ordinary sword either. It can transform into a bunch of stuff. A lasso, a shield, a boomerang, a parachute, a grappling hook, a tennis racket, a baseball bat, a net, and a coffee mug. It's the ultimate Swiss army knife, er, sword. Uh, where did you get that? Yeah, I can deflect magic attacks, uh, shoot some energy beams, cut through lightning, and freeze you solid. It's comparable to He-Man's sword of power, which stems from an eternal deity of natural order. Shira can even use it to transform her horse into a flying alicorn, Swiftwind. Indeed I am, Shira. Indeed I am. That's a really deep voice for a horse to have. Wait, why am I not drunk anymore? Uh, well, holding the sword wards off possession and mind control, so I suppose that could include alcohol. With this blade in hand and her mind all her own, Adora joined the rebellion against the Horde. As She-Ra, she was an incredible powerhouse of a hero, defeating evil daily in her own unique way. Unique is sure one way to put it. Take the time a village was set on fire. Her solution was to cut up an entire lake and throw the whole thing over the place. Hopefully not drowning anyone. Hey lady, why didn't you just use your super breath to put out the flames, which you totally have. Much like her hulked out brother, She-Ra's strength can simply defy all reason. Smacking away meteors, throwing a battleship like a skipping stone, or even closing up a canyon like it's a Ziploc bag. What? How about that time she climbed from the surface of the planet all the way to a spaceship in orbit in less than a minute? Assuming the orbit around Etheria is similar to Earth's, she must have been climbing about 20 times faster than sound. Even better, her Mount Swiftwind kept up with the rock people, who can fly between solar systems. Therefore, he might be able to move over 450 times the speed of light. Rock people's a dumb name for people that are fast. Rocks are slow. And then there's the other flying horse, Crystal Sundancer. Oh god, wait, where is this? this another pony episode? Crystal Sundancer was specifically stated to be faster than Swiftwind, and took She-Ra and He-Man to another galaxy. Apart from super speed, she is also strong enough to kick the moon away. Factoring the moon's size compared to the distance it was kicked here, she must have struck it with a force equal to 44 Yoda tons of TNT. I don't know what Yoda has to do with this, but powerful she is. <laughs> 
Just imagine if someone threw the entire Great Wall of China at you 70 quadrillion times. So yeah, super strong. All thanks to the ultimate power from a sword that's definitely not plastic. Clearly, Adora's heroic deeds have more than made up for her dark past. Whether she's protecting her family or her new homeworld, She-Ra truly lives up to the title, Princess of Power. For the honor of Greystone, I am She-Ra! Somewhere among the distant knots of the ocean, a mysterious island is veiled by mist and magic. This is Themyscira, home of the Amazons. Location, tropical island. Population, 100% women. Attractions, everyone's a highly trained warrior. Oh yeah, I know where I'm taking my next vacation. The Amazons were tasked by the Olympian gods to prepare for a great battle, and trained in solitude for many millennia. Until one day when a military plane randomly crashed into paradise. Call it luck, call it will of the gods, but Olympia's chosen were no longer a secret. Even they knew it was about time they checked out what the rest of the world was up to. So after playing the deadliest game of catch ever, because they were catching frickin' bullets, they chose their finest fighter as an ambassador to, quote, man's world. This was Diana Prince, or as she would come to be known, Wonder Woman. Diana didn't just reconnect the Amazons with the rest of the world, she became a goddamn superhero. And one of the best. With her divine physiology, she already possessed incredible superhuman abilities. However, her powers were amplified by blessings of the gods, including flight, accelerated healing, and a little bit of magic. But as someone who's noticing a few new experience lines in the mirror every morning, I think I'm mostly jealous of her power to barely ever age. Experience lines? You mean wrinkles? What? Of course not. I'm just leveling up in life. You know, I've been working on a de-aging solution. You could give it a try. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know how this goes, mother... <laughs> you son of a bitch. <clears throat> anyway, it's important to note that Diana is more than simply superhuman. She's trained in martial combat and equestrianism all her life. We know she was born when the Roman Empire employed centurions, so she's likely over 3,000 years old. That's crazy! Why do I sound like a concert mouse? Well, back to the drawing board. Moving on, Wonder Woman also carries an arsenal of specialized weapons and tools. Sure, the invisible jet seems kind of stupid when she can just lift off on her own, but how about that lasso of truth? She can make anybody spill the beans with that thing. I cross-dress in a Wonder Woman outfit. It makes me feel powerful. She has carried many blades, but her tried and true was crafted by the god of the forge, Hephaestus. The edge of this immaculate sword is so fine, it can shear electrons off of atoms. Superman once used it to literally split an atomic nucleus, which promptly blew up in their faces. <laughs> Good times. She can even summon this magic sword at any point thanks to her metal cuffs, the bracelets of submission. Not only do those sound super kinky, they're super durable. They're made of eighth metal, one of the strongest elements in all of creation. That means they can deflect basically anything. Bullets? Easy. Heat vision hotter than the sun? Not a problem. Dark sides omega beams that are totally unblockable? Well, they aren't anymore, bitch. The name isn't really a BDSM reference. Well, not today at least. While wearing the bracelets of submission, Wonder Woman's power is actively suppressed, held back for, presumably, the safety of others. So when she takes them off, step the hell away, cause she's going god mode. With all this potential, Diana quickly made a name for herself among the superhero community. In time, she helped found the Justice League, the greatest team of superheroes the world has ever known. Fellow leaguer Batman even called her the best melee fighter in the world. It's all about those wave dashes. What? Oh, wrong melee. But it's Batman, a guy who knows 10 times more than Google ever will. I mean, she's basically defeated every other Justice League member in a fight at some point. This chick literally punches warheads like they're beach balls. She's defeated Professor Zoom, the Flash is equal, while on the receiving end of multiple light speed punches. By punching at light speed, the mass of Zoom's strikes technically reaches a near infinite level, striking with the force of a white dwarf star. That is 2 billion megatons of force per punch. 
and Diana beat the shit out of him while she was blind. She certainly has the speed to match. She's fast enough to race Shazam and battle Superman from the Earth to the Sun in about 20 seconds. During a conflict with an entity known as the Shattered God, she moved quick enough to block all his fractured pieces from returning to him from across the universe. And she's helped move both the Moon and the Earth though she did need a bit of help. It takes about a thousandth of a celestial body's weight to move it against the sun's orbit. Assuming Wonder Woman was pulling her fair share, that means she's lifting over two quintillion tons. She's not invincible though. Technically, she's vulnerable to piercing weapons. You know, things like bullets and swords. To be fair, you would need far more than a few bullets to take her down. Not only does Diana have a stellar healing factor, but she's incredibly tough. Hell, when Bats was putting together a list of contingency plans in case any Justice League members went crazy, he left Wendy's box empty, cause he says she doesn't have a kryptonite. Why even have the box at all? Whatever. Simply put, Wonder Woman is an incredible warrior. There's a good reason why she's considered one of the DC Trinity. She didn't just bring the Amazons back into the modern world. Wonder Woman inspired many new generations of heroes, while saving the day time and time again. I am Diana, Princess of the Amazons. I won't be denied. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, I need to rock out to that she theme song with some Raycon earbuds. she Shira. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Raycon. Whether you're working at home or keeping up your fitness, you know that what you're listening to should be what you want to hear. Not your roommate, not your ex-wife, and definitely not your neighbor mowing the lawn for the fourth time this week! Cut it out, Larry! Grass doesn't grow that fast! The answer is wireless earbuds, but before you drop hundreds of dollars, check out Raycon. Raycon starts at half the price of other top-tier earbuds, and they sound even better! They're super comfortable and come with a bunch of adjustable fits! The newest everyday E25 earbuds are the best ones yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a clever compact design. I've been using mine around the lab for weeks now, and they really are little miracles of science and sound. There are no dangling wires, and they look really cool. Makes sense. I mean, the company was co-founded by Ray J, and famous people like Cardi B and Snoop Dogg really dig them. Now is the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash deathbattle. That's buyraycon.com slash death battle. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Zeus, Heracles, Hippolyta, give me strength. For the honor of Grayskull, I am She-Ra! Compared to an Amazon like me, you're just playing dress-up. You are strong, Amazon, but no match for a princess of power. Get over yourself! See what I mean?
That's what power really looks like. K.O. Ooh, talk about taking a little off the top. Both She-Ra and Wonder Woman had clear advantages over the other in this fight, some to great extremes. Yeah, it was pretty obvious that Dora was a lot stronger than Wendy. She-Ra moved the moon all by herself while Diana needed a little help. But strength alone obviously isn't everything. Pulling the Earth at all still means her strength was comparable to She-Ra's. So let's check their experience, arsenals, and speed to see if Diana could reliably counter that power difference. And uh, spoilers, she definitely could. First of all, She-Ra's transforming blade implied a broader versatility than Wonder Woman. However, unlike Diana's toolkit, very few of these forms were applicable to combat. And I mean, having a shield is handy, but not when it takes away the sword you need to counterattack your foe after blocking. What kind of strategy is that? Certainly not one Wonder Woman and her three millennia of experience would follow. She-Ra may have also been fighting all her life, but she's much, much younger. Plus, She-Ra didn't have an answer to that atom slicing sword. Adam, not not that Adam. With that in Wonder Woman's hands, the strength difference didn't really mean as much. Still, in order to take advantage of all this, Wonder Woman needed to be faster than She-Ra. Let's look at Swiftwind and Crystal Sundancer. Logically, She-Ra rides these mounts to travel at faster speeds than she is capable of herself. We know Swifty can zoom around over 450 times the speed of light, but the other little pony is way quicker. Both He-Man and She-Ra were dependent on Crystal Sundancer for their trip to another galaxy. Giving their time frame a generous benefit of the doubt with just one hour, this magic horse must have been traveling about 22 billion times light speed. Definitely impressive, but then there's the Shattered God feat. Right, the pieces of the Shattered God that Wonder Woman blocked all originated from far corners of the universe. Not the galaxy, the universe. Now, the exact size of the DC universe is a hotly debated topic. I know, very interesting stuff. Oh, just skip to the good part, nerd. Fine, fine. There's plenty of evidence that it is larger than our own known universe, and there is more than 100 trillion light years between the Earth and the foreseeable edge. To close this gap in such a short time, each shard must have been moving over 50 quintillion times the speed of light. And again, Diana blocked all of them, one after the other rapid fire. Remember, Shira must be slower than Crystal Sundancer, potentially only comparable at a reactionary level if at all. Therefore, at absolute minimum, Wonder Woman was more than 9 billion times faster. A much bigger difference than the strength comparison, and more than quick enough to stick that magic sword right where it really hurts. Shira's amazing strength and versatility may have kept the Amazon running, but Diana's skill, arsenal, and incredible speed tipped the scales enough for a victory. It's no wonder she ran out of time. The winner is Wonder Woman. Thanks for watching. The battle music is linked down below. Death Battle will return in August, but in the meantime, we'll have a brand new fight every week with DBX. Apparently, I've found a worthy foe.